Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Mikro Museum für Gegenwartskunst. My name is Tasneem Baghdadi. I'm head of education and public programs. And yeah, I welcome you today uh, to the curatorial talk with Juan Rupa. I'm pleased to uh, welcome Mirwan Andan and Reza Afisina, members of Rangrupa, and Tyuki Imamura from the Ruru House Initiative. Uh, all three of them will talk about their process and curatorial approach tonight uh, for Documenta 15. And uh, yeah, this talk is a cooperation between Mikro Museum für Gegenwartskunst and uh, the MAS postgraduate program in curating of Zurich University of the Arts. And uh, therefore, I'm also pleased to welcome Dorothee Richter, uh, Professor of in contem Contemporary Curating, and Ronald Kolb, who is a co-head of the postgraduate program sitting right here. And yeah, uh, both of you will introduce the group and moderate through the evening. Uh, yeah, I'm very excited to hear the uh, uh, insights and uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for the kind introduction. <clears throat> yeah, um, the documenta is now about eight months <laughs> away. <laughs> and so it's a very exciting moment for all of us, I think. Uh, I would very much like to welcome Risa Afesina, who's a new media artist, Mirvan Andang, who is uh, also working as an author, for example. <laughs> and Yuki Imamura, who is now also responsible for the art education, that kind of things going on in uh, the Ruru House. Um, and of course, you know, they stand in how now, now for the bigger community. And we are also happy to announce that we will work in two projects together. One uh, will be kind of part of the compost idea. Um, and kind of we will also compost artistic and curatorial knowledge here in Zurich and the other one will also be um, a summer school with the art education part of Documenta. So we are very happy about that and you know we are always very much interested in the comments and how this would be a future possibility to live together. Um, I think you will also introduce notions like Lumbung, the shared rice barn and hangout that's called Nong Kong and kind of ideas how things start to evolve together. And um, so the idea of a big family, of a big network, big living room and kind of expanding through very different channels. So I think I will just hand over and after the presentation we will of course have the possibility to discuss uh, also things like how are then actually decisions are uh, coming, they, they arrive to certain decisions and things like that, which are of course crucial for a situation of a big community. So very welcome and we are really looking forward to your talk. Actually, we, we, we really like to converse rather than we talk one direction and then uh, it's, it's much better if we converse and then uh, we can listen to each other, uh, our stories, our, uh, our, yeah, each of us have our own stories uh, to tell, I'm pretty sure we're in this room. Uh, so yeah, uh, maybe I will start about uh, what Indonesia is. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, some, of, uh, some of you already uh, uh, already know Indonesia before. I mean, yeah, you uh, you, you know about the country, and then uh, which is situated in Southeast Asia, uh, uh, situated in Southeast Asia with seventeen thousand and five hundred seven uh, twenty something islands. Uh, now there are thirty three provinces with population around two more than two hundred uh, million populations, uh, spreaded in from Merauke to Sabang. Uh, uh, and as you can see, that, uh, this is the dots, actually, the, the red dots is, uh, we, are, we are preparing a, a, a magazine called Majalah Lumbung, which is, uh, which is uh, an, an effort to bring to the earth uh, this concept of Lumbung through uh, the language from magazine side, uh, which is for us uh, much more popular to, 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 
to disseminate the information or the concept about lumbung. Uh, as you can see, there are there are uh, pff, there are nine dots which. Uh, we work with a researcher and writer uh, for this majalah Lumbung in Payakumbu, West Sumatra, and then in Samarinda, Kalimantan, and then uh, in Kuningan, West Java, and then in Makassar, South Sulawesi, and then Singaraja in Bali, and also in Lombok, uh, West Nusa Tenggara. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, where's my point? Ah, this is one. And then this is in Sumba, East Nusa Tenggara, and then this is uh, North Halmahera uh, in Moluka, and then this is Sentani, Jayapura in Papua. So this is the nine, uh, the nine uh, locations we work with uh, locally uh, anchored uh, and strongly re uh, culturally related uh, writers and researchers in these nine uh, locations. So maybe this is just uh, an, introdu an introduction what is in what Indonesia is. And um, uh, yeah, uh, should we go to uh, what Lumbung is? Yeah. Uh, so actually, I found a picture of uh, in in the 70s. Uh, there are uh, there are uh, some places in uh, in uh, South Sulawesi uh, which uh, they 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 really into this uh, organizing like a wedding ceremony or. Uh, celebrating the baby who were just born and then any any family events so in this area called uh, the duri people in Enrekang, south sulawesi they really they really uh, supporting each other uh, when there is a family organizing uh, a family event so uh, like in a wedding ceremony if you if you if you if you want to uh, uh, organize, organizing this wedding ceremony and then your neighbors will come to support will come to support and help you to preparing dish uh, or like uh, cleaning the plates uh, as a post event uh, or post uh, event uh, post party uh, uh, activities uh, and also yeah they're preparing the dish this is in 70s and then it's still happening up until now the last time I was there last year uh, in it's still the same. It's still just the same. This is a uh, langda, a kind of uh, uh, the name of uh, uh, a very specific uh, lum uh, lumbung uh, architecture uh, in also in Duri, where they hang out uh, below this uh, uh, below this uh, langda. And then the same. This is also this is last year. What, what was happened in seventies and also what happened much long before uh, are still the same up until now. And then this is what we call actually this is what we call lumbung uh, as a software. So if is this langda is lumbung as a hardware, and then uh, lumbung is not only uh, practice uh, or can be seen as a physical uh, physical matter, but also it's a, it's a matter of software. It's a matter of uh, so social system. It's a matter of uh, people support each other. Uh, not, not only in the time of crisis, but also in the time of happiness, uh, because sometimes it's, it's only we only sometimes most of the time we only narrate uh, the we only narrate uh, the the bloody the bloody events, or we only narrate we only notes we only write uh, when it's uh, bloody uh, tragedy or anything. But rarely do we really see how happiness is narrated uh, and then disseminated as a narration among us. So yeah, or maybe that's from me. Maybe Reza can continue. Yes. Like, uh, we just continue within these particular spirits that generate into our uh, cultural and the background society. So we uh, we just would like also to share like on how us cap capacities and then becoming a particular working as collective in the Jakarta's uh, sense and point of views because most of us actually is being connected since we are in the college time back in the 90s. So most of us also. Um, experiencing uh, in the sense of new order regimes uh, uh, back up until 98 for example and then part of us also including myself is a, within that particular time is also happening to be um, college uh, like part of the college student movement during the during the reformations era so actually we share these notions of capacities on how us having positions ourselves during that time at the art college but also at the same time, we determine on how our future is being uh, 
a, a practice so far because as under acknowledged for example in the notions of lumbung spirits it still happened up until now so actually we're not bringing toward the, the, the sense only the traditional or the traditions but this is already being in the contemporary societies so this mentalities of this method as a lumbung as an approach for example the ones that we introduce it as the process part of our process for documenta actually it's a method not a title not a theme or even not a conversions uh, toward these particular models and the ones that now already uh, selected as the particular uh, participants let's say or friends of artists that relate to documentas there's already they're already practicing they already have like different kind of pro uh, process evaluating criticizing not only in the work of the collective artist or as art as an artist itself but toward the sense of a uh, local uh, local anchor uh, grassroots uh, community wise so this particular different mixture for example in indonesia we call it lumbung but suddenly in is it in wajuku they call it maya or in the festive suliniger for example they call it maya as a, as, as a yeah, and in Latin America, they call it Minga, and also Nongkrong, we just find out like in the Buenos Aires, or even in the Catalonia, and in, in the Basque, uh, the ones that we uh, also part of this uh, uh, participants, they, they call it also Rancho, for example, with the same addressing uh, a similar gesture of uh, having conversation, sharing uh, different kind of thoughts, positionings, and the most important thing is deliver a different kind of what so-called resource. So this is like our beginning. Then when we initiated Ruang Rupa back in 2000, for example, why we need that? Because within the certain moment, we're thinking that if we uh, uh, put admirations, if we already trust within each other, because we already been friends uh, even before Ruang Rupa starting, and then why don't we uh, take a nap, uh, next step just to like really delivering us uh, knowledge and then how it's going to be distributed. So this is part of our challenge during the time, especially after the reformations era, because it's quite mushroomy. Organizations, NGO, collective, groups of artists or non-artists, it's like kind of like um, uh, showing, uh, 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 surfacing in, in, in the sense of uh, how uh, they would like to celebrate uh, what's so called the freedoms uh, of democracy, for example, because we have quite long history to regard the other regime, for example. But the things that we are acknowledged mostly is the things that happen in Java. As you mentioned, like in the map, like most of us, uh, except Andan, came from the South Celebes, which is, in, uh, which is uh, another island, but most of us living in Java. And most of us only cram uh, inside this Jakarta or West Java province, for example. So that's why we came from uh, very various different background. We still could speak our own tribe language, for example. And then this notion is shared through us, us admiration within each others in, the, in, in our collective, for example, because each of every individual of us is an artist, but we don't have any luxurious moment to study what so-called curatorial practices we not study art history we never know about what happened with documenta we never have experienced what is castle but actually this is way that how we are not ignoring about the things that happen in the so-called western world we still keep like continuing consuming whatever the, we, we could mention at least we could grab some information and then how we would like to study and then how we are going to distribute the things that we know of so that's why in this particular notions, the most important thing for us to approach is later on becoming short of we need to define our space and then how we're going to shift our space because we not even uh, uh, know about the, uh, the notions of commons or the notions of uh, collective because as you see, like everybody is already doing it anyhow. And then suddenly when it's becoming like a method, becoming like quiet, uh, becoming like uh, uh, introducing as the words, and then suddenly it's, it's generating more different articulation, it is part of our challenge too. How we criticize ourselves by generating what is Ruang Rupa in the beginning? Is this like artist runs initiative? Or it is like initiative or place for artists to do some alternative work or something like that? But that's why like to regard this particular different kind of practice, we, the most important thing about the notions of lumbung is uh, sharing resources. So at the beginning, when we are anonymously 
being invited to propose to Documenta, the things that we did at the very beginning is to write them back to acknowledge that, hey, before we are proposing, we would like just to know that we're going to uh, work in the same line, we're going to share what we see Documenta as resource, and Documenta also see us as a resource. How are we going to share about this? How also we try to manage upon the notions of risk, for example? How are we going to taking care about this whole ecosystem if we believe that we also acknowledge different kind of resource? That probably, in the sense of inclusivity, we cannot grab them all, for sure, but at least we, we could find very various, distinct, different ingredients that could be important to our kitchens and later on to be harvested toward and becoming our cuisine on the table. The taste, we don't know yet because we have like different expectations, of course, but let's see within this particular practice as a social gesture, Dorothy mentioned nongkrong, but for us, even nongkrong, we cannot like really easy to articulate even in Indonesian's language because nongkrong is a gesture on how you are like really sitting on the street, squatting, having conversations, cigarettes, and then you just come to each of a particular way on how they're situated, and then it's becoming your landmark, and then suddenly you just went there without notions any what things that you have to talk about. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah, yeah. So that's why like this particular way of uh, acknowledging this nongkrong actually is already there, right? And also the notion of lumbung in this uh, German context, also the ones that we are find very interesting, even in Kassel, it's still uh, like that, no? So I want to add about uh, that. Uh, if you saw the pictures of uh, the pictures of uh, some living houses uh, in the slideshows, it's actually the living house we rented uh, since it was established uh, as an artist, uh, as an initiative in 2000. So we've been moving like three to four times, yeah? Yeah, because we are very poor, then yeah. we, we always have like this... Uh, but now, are we still poor? Uh, hopefully we st we poor, but we are rich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are rich in the making, maybe. We are rich in the making. Maybe. Uh, and then, uh, actually the, the, the living houses that we, be, we rent before, uh, we, we move like four times, and in, in every time we rent a house, the things that we set up at the first time is not a art. Uh, it's not a program that deals with art. It's not. It's not. It's not a. Pro, it's not a program of uh, talks or of a, a, or, or something else. But w w what we uh, did at the first time when we arrived in somewhere uh, to rent this living house is to to get to know of uh, of our neighborhood of everyone around us, uh, uh, like the, the the house next to us just to know their names, uh, if they are parents and have kids, how many kids they, they have, Where, which school those kids uh, went, uh, what, what are the hobbies of these people. So uh, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not suddenly that we organize an art events, exhibitions or talks on arts, but what we do is to blend. Uh, so we always try our best not to be an unidentified arriving object somewhere and then do something and then after that go away. So this is also applied in castle context. When we were, uh, when it was announced that we were uh, elected as an artistic director of Documenta, what we, what we propose uh, from, from, from the first place is uh, that to organize a, a house called Ruru House. And this is actually a continuation of not only uh, in Kassel, but also it's, it's a continuation of what we did in Indonesia because to have a Ruru house is also to grab all the, to, to grab the, uh, to, to, understand, to understand the neighborhood, the communities, not only uh, initiative in arts, but in any, in any issues, any people. Like there is uh, one person uh, who is now become our friend. His name is Enrique. He sells uh, like uh, bracelets and also merchandise in front of Ruru House. So he's the f person that who's been in there long before us uh, elected as a uh, artistic director of document. And for us, the, he is he's he's the one who's strongly locally anchored in 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 this in this area of Ruru House. So that's why we 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 we, we really like to hang out with him asking and also just sharing cigarette or maybe if we have coffee and then we share coffees because it's much more important than suddenly organizing 
uh, arts event in Ruru House. Maybe Reza can continue. The things that uh, within these notions of how uh, we are creating this sense of horizontal, I think uh, most of us uh, quite acknowledge that we are very close to the ground. I mean, we have like really strong relation to the ground. Mm -hmm. And also partly like how uh, us positions ourselves in each of every particular neighborhoods in 2000, we have to move every two years because we need to find cheap renting of houses. Just like to be living there all together, uh, how we share these capacities on, on doing different kind of practice, questionings about what is curatorial model, what is art and, criti uh, what is art and critics, for example, what is the, the art education, what happened with the college student right now. So uh, this particular way on how we try mostly to adjust, to adapt, to adjust, to adapt, and also partly like we are trapped in these particular circulations during that we are very dependent to the funding body, for example, since 2003 up until 2010, and then suddenly Indonesia is considered not a third world countries by the Western point of view. And then also like partly like Indonesia is not considering uh, a developing country, so all this particular NGO is moved, and then suddenly how we strategize ourselves to get sufficient enough for our supporting system. So back in 2010, for example, suddenly we are uh, creating uh, the, 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 the way, the system that being already there in the societies by uh, addressing what is collective pot, for example. How are we going to govern our supporting system together in each of our particular cases, not only for the collective who survive, but also partly for the institutions. It's not that Ruang Rupa or any other collective back in Indonesia didn't want to have like a grant or uh, asking funding from the government. It's not because, the, the problematic is because they have their own, they have their own nomenclature, they have their own way. Probably they have difficulties also to approach us or the things that they could help us. And also us also have difficulties on how we're going to ask them and afterward how we're going to report them back. Because this kind of flexibilities also we say like, okay, they do their own and we do our own. So in 2010, uh, actually we are generating this sense of economic model. We call it circular economic model within ourselves. And so before at least, I'm not the founder of Ruang Rupa, but since the beginning, we are, there are six of us in Ruang Rupa. And then now, uh, after 21 years, it's already in the other ecosystem together with the good, uh, with the good school ecosystem, as we call it, as a uh, collective study ecosystem. Reza, uh, discussing about the founders, I think mm. because Wang Rupa is not a republic, so founders <laughs> is not really a wife. No, no, no. We don't, we don't, we don't have, yeah. But we have like mothers inside, so yeah. we are taking care of each other yeah. very carefully. Of course, yeah. And then suddenly when we become an ecosystem, yeah? yeah. We, we, we make friends with Serum, and then some of our best friends in Serum also here. And then I'm very fortunate that we met here. And then we also, together with Grafis Uruhara, the printmaking uh, uh, studios. And now it's becoming 86 of us all together. And since 2015, even like 56 of us, it's on our payroll. How we create our payroll? First, we are learning from each of every capacities to regard uh, the status of becoming artists. Is it artists have its own minimum wage, for example? How are we going to calculating this? This is like really hilarious from, from us need, especially in, in Indonesia's context, for example. But we try to calculate it more fairly, at least in the some basic structure, this is one of the examples, at least we could supporting the needs, like the basic needs, like insurance, health, or something like that. And also the most important thing are, is probably uh, we consider that if you position yourself as an artist, you could do your own artistic processes rather than creating a proposal. But we also uh, acknowledge that our position is should be interdependent. So we have like, before, we are really eager and very heroic to becoming like really independent because we have our own money, we have our own funding and we could do whatever things that we do with our projects. And then suddenly we're becoming dependent because we need m amount of money. And then, and then suddenly we change again because we thought probably, probably there's many institutions that also need us in the sense how we work together but didn't know how to find a way. So this interdependent part is because since then, we just like really sit down together. It's not like really necessary we're asking the money, but we are also necessarily asking them how it is going to be beneficial. Because what we're thinking, again, 
is the matter of how we're going to share this particular resource. And by acknowledge this resource, it's not about the money, but it's also about the things that you could even sufficient to share. So this method is being applied so far by our process through Documenta. And Ruru House actually is one of the structures first acknowledged as a new venue of Documenta, but now uh, since July 2020, actually we've been activated together by the students, uh, also like castle ecosystem, and then now it's a place for working, for a place or uh, place making also uh, as a living room. Like uh, we are glad that uh, I think it's September last year, like Ronald and Dorothy and a couple of the students went to Ruru House, even Ruru House is not kind like ready yet. Up until now, actually, it's not ready that ready, but at least it's now, now it's much more proper, just like you have to meet or something like that. But we acknowledge this time to time, it is could be like naturally grow. How we going to like first, how we going to plant the seeds and then how we going to nurturing it since the beginning and then cultivating it together, cutting the things that could be not suits to us need, just like Ruang Rupa's program. Some of Ruang Rupa's program we've been throwing away because we said like it's not necessary, because we cannot do artist residency, because it seems like artist residency right now, the way that we feel in our context is becoming like Airbnb with the content. And then we said like, oh, this is probably quite challenging for us. How are we going to evaluate ourselves? Or, 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 or yeah. <laughs> like fancy hotel, like I mean, it's much more easy, no? Like back in the 90s, I mean, we cannot do like residencies especially to regard the visa and everything. But anyhow, then suddenly like this is like growing and growing and then one of the initiation, that's really important, suddenly when we met a friends from ZHDK, for example, and then suddenly it's a knowledge with the other way of how this ecosystem works, not only concerning Documenta, because for us the most important thing, first is Castle, the second what happened before Documenta, and then what we are going to see all together by this sensory experience to regard us not most of us didn't any uh, have experience even to visit castle and seeing documenta and uh, the most important thing what happened after documenta so by this particular notion we always encouraging most of our friends to like really get connected to having this sort of different kind of conversations and how to see about the potentiality that happened and rising in castle so far. So for ex that's why one of the initiation, we call it before is unschooling, but we thought like unschooling, it feels like um, not that it yet. It like a schooling society. Yeah, something like that. So we were like, oh, okay, but at least for the bridging during that time, and then we have Julia Rossini here and also Chuki Imamura, the ones that already involved in the, in the sense in the beginning of let's say unschooling network. And then suddenly after like several conversation with ZHDK and also with other friends and then suddenly it's becoming composting knowledge because what we did actually is like how are we going to taking care of the soil even before the harvest. So what we are imagining, each of every participants or each of every friends that right now already practicing, we don't want to extracting uh, the things that they've been already doing. Yeah. It's the composting yeah, and also like partly like how we imagine documenta is not like one exhibition, like one exhibition. But we, we are trying to make these exhibitions could be uh, generate into different kind of program activations, uh, spontaneous act, uh, or anything that could relate with this particular process. For example, uh, and also part of the ecosystem, even they could bring their own ecosystem. For example, let's talking about the Brito Arts Foundations back in Dhaka, Bangladesh, the ones that we already know ever since. And then suddenly, when they get invited, and then they said like, I would like to bring uh, uh, our dear friends, like a mural art artist that mostly drawing in the rickshaw, for example. And we said like, oh, this will be good. Because suddenly we would like to know and learn something more within your ecosystem because you thought this is sufficient to be shared as a part of articulation and harvest in castle. So this is part of how we composting knowledge also would like to acknowledge this particular model on how we would like to like put all together and any differentiations, any thoughts, any matter, and also how this could be uh, 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 give us a good soil afterward. So this is part of our introductions, and then probably Chuki would like, or Julia would just like to share all together. Yeah, thank you. Um, just to add a little bit, and maybe try to make a connection 
with what you're talking about, Limbun. I feel like, speaking of the resource sharing, it's not just seemingly useful things that we can share. It, it's also waste and garbage that we share daily, actually. When you put waste in the trash bin, you're sharing that with society, with everyone. And, and composting, I think, is an interesting metaphor to really think about what we can share and what we can care collectively. Because it's, it's really also about a collective caring process. Because at the end of the composting, at the end of the compost, what you get is only a grain of soil, which is only the beginning of something else. So um, it's really ongoing collective experiment to think for us, for us to think about alternative terrain of maybe knowledge production, alternative terrain for knowledge sharing, or maybe somewhere we want to stand on in the future. So it's really a never-ending process, which again speaks to this idea of what would happen after the 100 days of Documenta. Because it's not just about this festivalization and a specific time and a period that's important for our life, for our society. It's a whole never-ending process that we really care about. So in that sense, I really love this metaphor. And it's, I think, a way better than the idea of deschooling or unschooling, which would only <laughs> emphasize the binary. Because in the compost, there is no binary, really. Everything is processed. Everything is changing. We're co-cultivating. So that's something that we've been working on together with Ronald and Dorothy and Julia and many other friends that they invited to um, the Ruler House conversation. Yeah. 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 yeah I think. Anything else, Kakak Andan? I just want to add what uh, Tiuki said about composting uh, from the from the garbage and everything. One of the inspiration we have, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, uh, some of our friends uh, have been practicing uh, uh, natural farming, which they do not use anymore. They there are a community of. Uh, uh, natural farmer in uh, South Sulawesi in Bulukumba who who have been practicing natural farming and they do not use anymore uh, any chemical fertilizer, any pesticide, herbicide or fungicide which are very harmful not only to the not, on, not only to the uh, to the plants and also to the earth and also of course to the human being. And what they use, uh, one of the ingredients when they try to make uh, their own ingredients to practice the natural farming is compost, composting. Mm. So, so it's it's really it's really connected. What just Tuki said that when uh, what we share is not only the good things, it's not only it's not only about uh, the good thing, but also uh, the rest of. Uh, the rest of our uh, things that we already used, uh, so it's it's really connected with this practice uh, practice of uh, natural farming. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh, part of our passing the ball, <laughs> and we could just like playing around and. and have, but thank you very much for your time, and thank you very much for having us here. It's been very pleasure for us to share this particular uh, conversations, and then hopefully it's fruitful. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, um, I first want to acknowledge also that I'm really very happy that so many of you came and a lot of uh, people he here, we worked together at some point, so that's really also a, a pleasure to see all of you. Um, and I would like to start with some questions and also of course then hand it over to all of you. Because I, I would like maybe also to, to go a little bit more into the structure as on, on one level you have uh, the Lumbung members which are usually also kind of collectives you invited to work with you. Then there are the artists and uh, they were um, uh, kind of officially announced in a homeless paper which really it's called Asphalt. And it's also really a, a very nice rereading of what is usually done in the art field. And um, then you have a lot of associated members like us, for example. 
and maybe you would like to explain that a little bit that you have kind of this different ways to create your ecosystem like in different structures and overlapping uh, ways to deal in different ways also with people. And of course, maybe just to mention that there's kind of the fear to some sometimes this anxiety that that will not really be an art exhibition. I'm very sure that will be also a great art exhibition or a great exhibition which has this very lively moment. But I'm very sure that it's also very interesting visually, kind of the rereading of the art system as well. So maybe you could explain a little bit the different uh, ways to work with people and the different ecosystems. Uh, yeah, this is like uh, in the beginning, actually, uh, what we feel very, very important is to acknowledge our exercise or how us to determine the, determine the, 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 the steps on us process uh, toward these uh, notions about how we would like to engage uh, within Documentas 15 at the beginning. So that's why the, the, the things that uh, first that comes in our mind is we need to know castle. That's the first that comes to our mind because actually Ruru House is not only practicing just now or since July 2020, for example. Back in 2009, actually, we already making short of the model, what so-called Ruru His, uh, or uh, during that time we are playing with the, because we, during that time we have a project uh, uh, with Casco all together uh, in, uh, back in Utrecht, the Netherlands, and then we try to make um, kind of like, okay, because the Netherlands having the cultural uh, center called Erasmus Huys. So we back to have it like Ruru Huys. This is like really playful during that time. We were not like really thinking how, how we would like to use it. But how it's operate actually just the things that happen in, in, in Ruang Rupa. Because as you know, like the model of where we are situated during in Utrecht is an apartment. You need the code, you need the key or something like that. But Ruang Rupa is always like 24 hours open in the sense of open, like really open. Sometimes we get rubbed in the middle of the, of, of the night because it's open, open. Sometimes we, we already lost like different kind of motorcycle, video projectors because we are really open, open. So this is like in the particular societies, probably even in Indonesia's context of, of neighboring society, sometimes this is not as well common to switch the house to becoming like different kind of identifications toward our neighbor. For example, how we put our plat in, in, in to address this is Ruang Rupa. Because we don't, we don't have way how to publicize or communicating. Our website actually just being done <laughs> a couple years ago. So that's why like when we selected as an artist director documenta, many of us friends that probably not really sure enough, like Ruang Rupa is being selected, or probably some other uh, friends that not knowing Ruang Rupa, try to browse us, and then suddenly the ones who came up like different Ruang Rupa, from like you know the one who built like uh, kind of like Decoration. decorations party, even organize, uh, even uh, even organi uh, organizer production house. The name is quite the same, similar. So so they make a jokes on it because feels like we are jokes, you know, to become selected or elected. But since the beginning, actually, we don't imposing ourselves. Everywhere we went, we just like being ourselves because that's our necessities to do so. We, we don't, we don't, we don't like the things that Andan mentioned. Really important. Everywhere we went or everywhere we move, actually, we try just to blend in, just like way that we are gesturing within each other, and then suddenly we know how potential it is, and then suddenly we create something to it. So it's kind of like cultivating also as part of our strategies and also mobility as a part of our issues is also really important because part of mobility is also to acknowledge different kind of ideology, how it's come out and how it can mix and then how it's go together. And then partly, uh, when, we, when we have this long process of engagement, ever since that we, when we realized that we are came from Indonesia and we need at least 15 days to release our visa, even though we got invitations or business invitation, but still, Indonesia is considering need a visa to go to Germany. 15 days uh, and spend, I don't know, like 100 euro, yeah? yeah, probably just to pay the, the visa fee. Can you imagine such an efficient kind of thing? 
aside of time wise but also we we need to spend something and there's nine of us who taking care of uh, documenta since the beginning when we selected and then uh, and 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 the rest is taking care about good school as a part of our system so we have two babies actually in our hand so this is this is the thing that we realize then we start to thinking about this hybridity it's not innovation it's like hybridity we still have goes via online how we interact with so called lumbung at the beginning like lumbung interlocal that's the first chapter of us friends most of them collective but they have like similar approach to the things that happen with us in the good school ecosystem not only in ruang rupa so that's why like this 14 yeah. member we call it during the time 14 member of lumbung is the ones that working with us closely even before documenta but they already have like uh, creating different kind of practice challenging different kind of method within themselves and also already rooted and having like uh, different strategies how they compromising different kind of practices by artistic approach this is like really important to set up the ground basic involvement not only selecting back again none of us is curator none of us being trained as a curator Yes, we are very lucky because Sonsbeck 2016 acknowledged us the first co collective curator for Sonsbeck International Exhibitions back in Arnhem, the Netherlands. But within this particular practice and approach, we believe, then we trust, this is much more important, how you trust your neighbor and how you trust your network. In this particular sense, that's the basic foundation for us to like really working together. So. We take this step into bargaining positions to the institution. Hey, yes, we know that we are artistic director, but we don't want to work as a curator. So we need artistic team. So we built our artistic team together with uh, other friends that also could connect with the Lumbung Interlocal, with us in Ruang Rupa, and also the ones that now, uh, in particular, like working differently from the side of publications, communication, legal status, financial institutions, organization. This is the things that we are really happy because we and Documenta as a big institution, we could learn from each other. We don't want to change anything, but we are trying to find the way on how. For example, talking about artist fee. Documenta is always being like commission or something like that. Now we're thinking about different strategy. How about the seeds money, we call it. How about if the artists could govern themselves, now they already did, govern themselves with an own different assembly. Suddenly they connected. How they could share not only the resource, but production budget, for example. How they try to minimizing their own transport strategy. How they, they also uh, connected to the so-called uh, sustainability materials, for mm. example. And then we, this particular practice already happened in Castle right now. For example, a couple of months ago we have Symposiums, uh, network for sustainability uh, and recyclable material networks throughout the region in Kassel and also region in Germany. Just to acknowledge that these particular friends that having warehouse and also strategizing, monetizing, short of uh, generating more material from each of every big exhibition that could be used again. My apartment back in, back in Kassel also using uh, uh, most of the things that came from the storage or the things that we found on the streets and Ruru House also not facilitating, accommodating, but also we collecting different kind of material that came from the earliest edition of Documenta just to be fixed, refurbished, and we use it again. And each of our particular participants already acknowledging this. This is one of the examples how we work so far. And also partly, we're thinking like very hard to travel also. Mm. Then suddenly, March 2020, the pandemic, start in Indonesia, there's lockdown. We didn't know uh, what, what it's going to be partly in our future. We didn't know how we are going to react upon it. But since February 2020, actually, Andan is the one who last come to Jakarta before Sydney get locked down. Yeah. <laughs> and Andan safe back to Jakarta. But we already thinking about this hybridity in the beginning. Mm. Then probably, this is like a very important change for us even to embrace this pandemic as part of our process. So these notions of long process since March 2020 up until now, 9 o'clock or 8.30 o'clock in the morning uh, CET time, we're having a meet meeting all the time up until now. 
since March 2020. So it's like a very long process of engagement. Yeah, and we struggle with the time difference. Zones. Yeah, and then so we, we, I mean, like really hard. Yeah. yeah, especially when suddenly like the what's it called daylight saving time. Yeah. And then it's all, it's it's really inspire us uh, this uh, struggling on different time zones. That's the reason why if you uh, if you see the denouncement of the artists in asphalt, we don't mention uh, which country, which home countries they come from, but it's based on their time zones yeah. because we are really inspired with the struggling with this zooming every mm -hmm. time and with the time uh, yeah. the time different yeah. zones. Yeah, and also to answer and also to add what Reza mm -hmm. said uh, to answer what Dorothy asking about how do we work in a in a different context. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, this is also the question we, we had uh, since the, the beginning, but the most important question also for us, coming from us itself, we question ourselves that how do we still can get along with the con our, our own context in Indonesia? For the preparation of documentary, it will take uh, le less than five years, but it can be three or four years to go from 2019. It was the one of the biggest questions to, to, our, to ourselves. How do, we, how do we work on our context? We don't want to... We actually don't want to uh, getting lost in our context while we are in somewhere else uh, preparing something and then we lost somewhere, we, we, we lost in our own context. So we strategize uh, with, a, with a formula that up until now it works. And also, uh, uh, so far for me that uh, to, to, to work in a German context, it's really, it's really, uh, we actually in Lumbung there are seven values that we we we, we said uh, we, we we tried to formulate since the first time uh, so those seven values are locally anchored that's the reason why we 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 we, we have this rural house to get along with the people who are strongly locally anchored in castle like the communities initiatives and so on uh, second one is humor because we yeah sense of humor can be different from one continent to the different continents but yeah uh, uh, the third is uh, generosity. We also believe that this is one of the basic human being uh, attitude of the generosity and also uh, uh, generosity, transparency. The fourth is uh, sufficiency. The fifth is uh, uh, regeneration. Uh, and the seventh is uh, independence. So uh, what also what, what 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 also I found from since since the beginning when we question ourselves when we working with the German context is that uh, actually I was I was in Islamic boarding school and I, I I learned German language there and then I found one interesting concept which uh, which is Ausnahme or uh, exception so in the in the first place when we were selected then I think maybe it can work in this context of this Ausnahme uh, of this exception concept. Uh, and then, yeah, that's that's how we that's how the process up until now. And also, one one of important things that from also to add what Reza said is that so far since Ruang Rupa was established in 2000, up until now we always process best oriented. Result is important, but the process is very very important. That's that's also the reason why we organize many online talks like Lumbung Calling or organizing rural house, uh, organizing. Uh, symposium, hang out here and there uh, in a context of castle to get to know each other and also what is we've been discussing about beyond documenta, uh, after, documenta. after documenta. To survive, I mean, uh, 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 art practice is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is actually, uh, art practice is actually uh, an opportunity to experiment. Uh, it's a space to experiment and this is how we experiment Lumbung as a concept. We need to remember it's not a theme, it's not a name, it's a concept. We've been practicing it. It's part of our DNA in Indonesia to help each other, to support each other in any situation, including in the happiness. So in Lumbung, everything is on the table, not only sadness, but only ha also happiness. When there, when there are prob problems and then it's put on the table, when there are no problems, when there are problems, it's put on the table and then we try to find the problems. When there are no problems, please don't make a problem. Let's just have some fun. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. And that, that's, that's the, the, the good assumption. Like when we start to think about like how are we going to publish this? This is like partly like because we are really working hand to hand. I mean, we don't want to create our work as a part of divisions or department, even though like the particular structure back again into structures of institution, they're always like department of communication, department of, of education, art mediation, 
But since the beginning, actually, we are realized because we also create ourselves an event. We also making ours. Uh, uh, we we also making an event ourselves, and also we are involved with the different kind of big event, like such as a biennial, tri triennial, or something. So we experience this, and then we learn about how us communicating, structurize, and each of every individual of us also involved with the several different organization that related to the big event. For example, like in the local capacities, like Jakarta Biennale, for example. So we learn about this particular thing. So since the beginning, actually, we are already working toward this so-called department and the big institutions. How we going like really sit down together, updating all this time together, and also how we going to have this sort sort of tools. E example, uh, one of the tools that up until now is really important is in the kitchen. So this is like really important tool for us to like really. Right? Yeah, my office is in the kitchen. It's always <laughs> in the kitchen. Because yeah, because I cannot work in the cubicle space. It's going to be make me <laughs> so. But our zodiac doesn't fit with this. Yeah, the, our zodiacs and our profession yeah. did it fits in this, in this cubicle. In the cubicle yeah. Yeah. So we use the kitchen as a, our metaphor to collect these particular ingredients, and by acknowledge, for example, Dorothy mentions uh, us uh, suddenly have decisions together with Aspal uh, Street Magazines. Actually, it's like long process. Yeah, since the beginning we thought like. Probably the way that we could engage uh, the things within us process, not mentioning or imposing about us process being transparent, but at least like ever since that Ruang Rupa there, actually everything could be seen through the window, every, everything could be seen toward this different kind of practice that relate to most of our friends that now becoming participants of Documentas 15. So within the asphalt, actually because just like we find Enrique hmm. in the streets, and then we find also Stefan in the streets, and also we, we find like this, I always taking my daughter uh, to school, and I always see this Asphalt magazine, and the way that we know of, Asphalt is connected to Castle and Gottingen, even though the office in Hanover, but they're also working in the, in the model of different circular, uh, circular economic model to supporting the, the, the vendor. And for us, that's really important. Let's sit together with Asphalt. And then how they would react within this particular reductional that came from asphalt needs as a part of identification or to identify themselves if they would like to involve within us. So actually it's not like us having reductional and please asphalt doing this and then we pay you. It's not like that. We create like different kind of process and workshop together with yeah. them. How are we going to announce? And I think it's going to be continue, yeah? yeah. Because they're going to be like yeah. any Lumbung member also to yeah. conference. So for us, it's not about the exotism or having, you know, kind of like this street seller and then suddenly it's become, no. Actually, we are working together with them since the beginning we are arrived in castle. So these observations sometimes cannot be explained very clearly toward our notions and our limitation to English language on how this becoming a method, on how we're going to theorizing this as a, as a particular notions or word, for example. So that's why we always think like everybody have its own different characteristic and how you articulate could be different. Mm. Like the way that when we, me and other colleagues teaching up until now at the Castle University, we always mention to them, please use German language because we know that some of your articulations cannot be translated into English language just because you need us to understand. Mm. Because we also have this, some problematic issues within us Bahasa. Each of every one of us sometimes, I don't have his Buginese uh, language. I have a Sundanese language. There some are around... 200,000 different languages uh, in Indonesia itself. So when Reza speaks Sundanese, sometimes I don't, I, totally I don't understand. I don't understand what you're saying in, yeah, in the Bugis. Yeah, so. Also in reverse, when I speak yeah. Bugis, mm. uh, he doesn't understand. Mm. Sometimes when I speak Bugis, it's only me who understands. So, mm. so sometimes yeah. it's hilarious when we speak yeah, in yeah. the... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just sometimes in Indonesia's language too, it could be hilarious yeah, because yeah. we have like derived different kind of accents, for yeah. example. So this particular notion, how we articulate, so that's why in, the, in this particular long process of engagement, we always say, let's articulate, let's challenge. And also the most important thing that most of the time we are very respected, that's why it's come up to the notion of unschooling and composting, is we believe in the grotesque of how it's grow. We believe in errorness. We believe that we should do a mistake because we need to learn something from it. So we 
thinking about the things that we already speaking like seems like ideals, but in our sense of ruang rupa, practicing how we respect each other is to give some space to do a mistakes. So this is like really important for us to keep up until now. Mm. Because for sure like everybody has this idealist thing to make it more perfect. But what is more what is perfect without any mistake of error? So we also have the rights to make error. So that's why this is like really important. And then suddenly we're thinking about the composting knowledge, how it's constellations actually, because it's quite complicated. How are we going to, to, to position ourselves in the constellation of documenta? We call it ecosystem. Mm. Because in ecosystem, in your garden, in your particular yard, you could see like different way of living conditions, Micro different kind of habit, ha microorganism different kind of habitations, mm. every season, every day, every hour is changing, it's growing. You never notice, us never notice. Talking about inclusivity is actually generating different kind of challenge. Because suddenly, I'm not included, but, you, but you're talking about inclusivities. Let's take care about what is inclusivity toward this ecosystem. Sometimes, uh, I don't know, I never been like uh, making a process of bonsai. But in bonsai, sometimes you need to cut to trim. Mm. Not to cut, not to getting rid of, but to trim. Something that you need to becoming part like really beautiful in your sense. Could be different sense with others. But at least if you have a knowledge to cultivate, if you have n n knowledge to nourishing, to nurture it, and you also have the knowledge to trim, to trim mm. and also to have an error, to do a mistake. I mistream it. That's natural, no? That's a natural way on how it works uh, in, in, in this particular context of process. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, this is just to add my personal kind of feeling. Oh, thank, um, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Know, working as a curatorial assistant in this whole process and looking at the way you work with artists and everyone. Uh, this is also something that we discussed with Dorothy and Ronald and, and your colleagues um, last week when you came to Willow House, but I really feel like the way Reza and Dan and everyone is taking care of this whole process is not about the contractual relationship. It's not about the commission, documenta, artists, and selection and, and anything. Because the contractual relationship ends at a certain point. Like you, it has we never brief you to talk about like this. Yes, <laughs> go on. <laughs> go on. Hope you don't mind it. But, <laughs> but all the contract has the beginning and the end. Mm. But I remember once, long time ago, Reza once told me that hanging out is a hope. Mm. And I think that really summarized the way, the thing that you're talking about today. Because hanging out, it doesn't end. You can end temporarily but you can continue afterwards, a couple of days later. And that kind of human-based, face-to-face relationship, sense of trust and friendship, which is, I think, the most sustainable thing that would go beyond, far beyond the contractual relationship. And I feel like that's something that I constantly witness in this whole process of D15 as a foundation of a communication relationship. Yes. I, want, I want to add about this. Uh, the contractual relationship is always e extractive. So that's why we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we're not really into this contractual relationship because we don't want to be extractive, uh, extractive person. We, when you're extractive, it means that you're toxic. So, so we, we and then we, we, as we, as, as, we, as, as we said that we are much, in, we are really also love the practice of natural farming who don't use any toxic or ferti chemical fertilizer anymore to, to grow the plants, to, to build the ecosystem mm -hmm. and so on and so on, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> thanks so much. I, I would like uh, now very much to hand over the mic. Um, maybe there are questions about decision making and so on, so on. So just give a second your uh, thoughts so you can kind of come up with a question. I would really appreciate that. And maybe just to say so much, uh, Reza uh, has taken upon him and also is wanted to move to Kassel with the family. So I think that's also kind of brave, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Exactly, but um, yeah, so 
you can also indicate if you want to ask something that we already know where to circulate the mic, so don't hold back, just ask. <laughs> I know there are people here who are researching on uh, how you know make decision in communal situations. So, hi, I wanted to ask uh, something. Oh, <laughs> Coming back to, to the feeling that uh, Tuki was uh, communicating before about this idea of uh, finding friendship and finding a real like relationship-based uh, communication and creating this uh, magnetic field somehow together, which will continue afterwards, the event itself. I was thinking about asking to talk about the co-cultivation, because this is very much... Um, the, the different feeling I had when I met you and uh, also in the Ruru house and how um, initiatives or friendship are like involved and like, and then it's giving back, like it's, it's really this exchange, this helping the neighbor and then the neighbor come back and it's helping you to organize your dinner or, and this is very extraordinary and maybe we can talk <laughs> about it. You can, yeah, maybe you can uh, put some more cultivating and then you can use the compost. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I, I think that's true. Like, compost is, it's about the co-cultivation because it's not just about sharing because it's, it's, it's collective caring. It's the bacteria that's constantly moving that creates the compost, that creates the process. And without everyone's commitment, without every being's commitment and involvement, it doesn't, it just doesn't happen. And then um, co-cultivation. But I think um, kind of coming back to what Reza was talking about with the analogy of bonsai, yeah. I feel like it's not just about co-cultivation, but it's also about cohabitation. Mm -hmm. Because in the garden, like, like things are cohabitating like together and it's not some things go around like some things go together quite well but the other things don't but we just need to understand it's possible um, to live together and that takes time because it takes years a million years for for a piece of land to become a forest and that process of co-cultivation and cohabitation, I think it's quite similar to um, the process that you are talking about. Uh, when you, whenever you move to different living room, different houses in Jakarta, because without that sense of cohabitation and neighborhood, um, you would be trapped in a sense um, to very unidirectional, um, uh, motivation to do something together, but cohabitation or co-cultivation is much deeper than that, I believe. Uh, there is actually one plant which is uh, can be found in almost uh, in almost uh, in many houses in South Sulawesi where I come from. South Sulawesi is a is an island two hours away from Jakarta. Uh, uh, I think I showed a. Uh, uh, this one, yeah. This is Sulawesi. Wait, uh, this is Sulawesi. This is Jakarta. So it's two hours away from. So in South Sulawesi, there are almost in any houses there is moringa. They can be easily grow. There is, there is always moringa. Uh, they can be can be uh, can be turned into vegetables uh, to uh, as a dish to 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 eat every day, and then. If there is moringa in front of our in, in the yard, and then anyone just can, anyone anyone just can take it, and because it, all the neighborhood already know each other, and then, uh, and this and as we know, the moringa is a superfood, and it's very easy to grow. So, 
it's it's very easy to grow in Indonesia. So this is this kind of this kind of plants that we live with since we were we were we were very young and then up until now and then this is also how we learn from from this tradition of planting moringa in the yard and then anyone just can take it to 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 as part of uh, their vegetables uh, as part of their vegetables for the dish for the dinner for the lunch and everything so the 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 uh, talking about co cultivating uh, it's not about that we grow something together but it's about sharing it if, if, even though that even though that we didn't grow it together but and then if you are in the situation of need and then if you are in the situation of uh, uh, would like to have it and then you you can because we already know so that's why we, every time we put cigarette on the table and then Tuki ask may I may I take it well, it's on the table you don't even have to ask uh, you don't even have to ask so it's on the table so this is this is what I mentioned that uh, nongkrong or hanging out from our from our culture from our perspective from the social experience we have is is about if there's if there are happiness we bring on the table and then we enjoy it together because like if you if there are very delicious food and then you you are only alone or you, there are only two of you who enjoy it and there are a lot it's not delicious but if there are a lot of people who enjoy it the sound of people chew, many people chewing the sound of water uh, getting getting into the throat is really like a, it's really like a, a, a very, a very how to say a very a very powerful uh, sound of human being around us enjoying the food together. So that's why I said that if hanging out or nongkrong is about bringing happiness on the table and they enjoy it together with many people, and then if if there are problems we solve it together. And if there are no problems, please don't make a problems. Let's have just some fun. Uh, yeah, as you as you can see the the, the image. Uh, there is a word called Kalampang. Kalampang is a is a place where you where you where you hanging out. So lumbung is actually a word in Bahasa Indonesia, but in any different languages, which I would say that there are around two hundred thousand local languages, and some of them having alphabets, they have their own word on this method of resource resource sharing. Uh, both as a physical, as a, as, a, as like a wooden house, like a rice barn, but also as a social system where people are supporting each other in any situation, in any condition. Yeah. Just would like to address like uh, decisions. Yeah? This is like really important uh, to acknowledge uh, how we decide or making decisions uh, within us uh, process. Mm -hmm. That's actually quite the challenge. I mean, as a jokes within us, we could say that even decisions to having independence within our country is take a long time. Probably because of this, uh, you know, lots of things that we, we, we've been like really preparing and something like that. Because of the notions of like really, you know, gathering around together and then suddenly it feels like how you, how you decide into this matter. For example, like uh, within us ecosystem, uh, back in good school in Jakarta, because there's lots of us uh, together, uh, let's say it's 86 and growing, how we decide, for example, by creating a project or how we decide uh, to, uh, to deliver some amount of the profit that could uh, uh, support the different kind of programs related, for example, how we decide that Ruang Rupa needs percentage from the lumbung pot, or serums need for other activities, or Grafis Uruhara need to buy a paper, for example. How we, how we decide into this matter? We believe in one hand, in this uh, particular formulations, the one that we initiate, we call it majlis. This is Arabish, which is uh, slash as uh, assembly, or slash as also creating as a panels. And within each of our three panels, or each of every assembly, or each of every majlis, we are throwing uh, different kind of uh, questions and also different kind of option to solving uh, what the things that we need decide, like really, really uh, appropriate uh, decision, for example. Because as we know, sometimes it's a, such an, an, an ineffective way 
to like really hang out and getting together as a nongkrong because we don't believe in time and then suddenly like the, the meeting starting from 10 o'clock in, in, in the morning and then suddenly it's end around like 12 or 1 o'clock in, 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 the evening, in the evening and then back to the morning again. So sometimes it's like really not efficient to having this and sometimes we are really tired. We don't have any office, we don't have any, uh, like seems like we don't have any deadline. But in the sense of these capacities within the majlis, we always have what so-called harvester. Like for example, the ones that, you know, kind of like a, in a secretive way, they do like a drawing, they could like put a note or something like that. That's particular our ingredients to create our uh, recipes. To also that we could cook and then suddenly we could see the cushions on the table. This is like uh, actually naturally uh, how, how it's processed. Like we just talk everything that we want, like from the security, from the... Uh, because every majlis that we had each of every month, some, we always invited even us neighbor or us guests or the one who sell uh, noodles in our canteen or the security guy or the uh, cleaning team, for example, just to have them also being heard. So this is how we govern. And the one who positions themselves in the such on how they have the strategy for financial structure is not an artist. It also came from the economic background who uh, have this capacity to acknowledge artistic processes. This is really difficult to find. I mean, we don't train an artist to be economic or we don't train an artist to be finance. But we, but we are sick and, and finding like the one who work in the financial but as well could acknowledge different kind of what so-called artistic practices. This is like very long process. And then the decisions, that's why, it's always like lots of negotiating. Probably if you work with the institutions or let's say work with the funding body, they really like really, how come that's, uh, there's no decisions yet? I need the letter right now or I need the result right now. Seems like we are lazy, but actually yes, sometimes. Because we thought that lazy is a gift, and we should calculate it, the laziness into currency. But we know that there is a quest called due diligence. <laughs> there are, you know, you know. <laughs> so we should turn this into currency, then we're going to be very rich. But, but in the sense, we are thinking that probably some effectiveness within so-called decisions, we need to even articulating again as a part of the reason, as a part of excuses, or something like that. But in the end, for sure, we are could manage with so-called deadline. We could decide. And then why? Because we trust each other. For example, here, these three of us. Juki have a question. Hey, Reza, what will happen with this particular letter? I already make it. Julia, sending some link. Please, can you read this about this? Yes, we read it. But we not, sometimes we're not replying back very, very fast. Of course, we probably they have the questions also. Why they didn't reply? But in the end, we could trust them like, hey, just go with it. Because we know that what you did and we, we acknowledge to each other. Just like having Andan the, in the beginning when we have conversation with Andan, let's say, so-called join Ruang Rupa because Ruang Rupa didn't have any member anyhow. But we need Andan since the beginning. But we don't decide like, hey, Andan, please work with Ruang Rupa at that certain point. Andan is very eager probably just to get out from the old jobs, which is very promising but suddenly just joining Ruang Rupa and we were like, ah, you're here. And it's like, okay, there's no decisions, no contract, no whatsoever. And then enjoying his particular works up until now. I don't know, but awesome. yes. Yeah. I'm joining Ruang Rupa because I thought that I could have, uh, could have place to sleep <laughs> at the beginning because I don't have a place to rent in Jakarta during particular time. It's like very crazy within economic crisis. But in the sense, this is, this is the things that we acknowledge within decisions. I mean, this is like really important, yes, but how are we going to strategize? It it's, it's, it's depends on the, the, the situations that we need. For example, like this. I don't know, like, Indonesian is very bad in football, but Indonesian love footballs. For example, we always have a sense of approaching this football methodology. Like decision. How do you see? like 11 players on the field, 22 players on the field having their own decision, who's taking score, for example. I think within 
as experience ya yeah, in the Indonesian football. That's why it's, it's not good in the sense because they're not score, but how they play actually it's also different to have decisions because sometimes you cannot depend on striker, you cannot depend on forward, but sometimes you need someone like for example your, your libero who could run really fast or the false nine who didn't do nothing, didn't get even the ball at the beginning, the one who could miss uh, some penalty kicks or the one that could come from the midfielder. That's in particular position that we need to address because you trust each other. It's not like you have the importance who's better, who's not, but in this 11 players in the field, 22 players in the field, or even the B team, you need to trust each other. This is, this is what's, what we are uh, mostly thinking about determinations or auto decision making in, the, in, in this sense. I think there's a question. Uh, yes, um, uh, maybe it relates also to this uh, collective decision making. So uh, in my personal experience, when you try to build uh, horizontal and collective structures, um, there's often uh, informal power structures that arise, so in, uh, unintended unbalances in the group, uh, the power accumulates again even though nobody wants it uh, in the group um, and in a general way I would like to ask um, how you, if, if you experience this dynamic, how you deal with this, like when sometimes it becomes vertical again even though you want it to be horizontal um, and specifically I would be interested how you decided whom of this big group uh, was going to curate documenta. It's going to be like very hard questions, but in the sense, we never acknowledge power within ourselves. I mean, we always like. Uh, but we like to watch Power Rangers. Yeah, we, and it's, that's like only the series that we know, like you know, just through addressing power in the Western context. But that's really important. How we define ourselves work horizontally, because this is uh, not yet being formulated so far. Why we we work horizontally? Because the things that we are that we are uh, uh, need as a part of necessities is to uh, deliver uh, how this power could as well being uh, uh, fluid, just like you know rhizome, yeah? how 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 it swarm beneath. So like we never like really acknowledge that Andan is much more Andan is much more smarter than me. But I never like really acknowledge Andan is much more smarter than me. But I really inspired by Andan. I really admire what he's doing. I also inspired by Ade or any other friends here and there, and also the big family of documentas. And I could learn many things. So just like uh, I think it's also part like like the background. If if you see like this. Like, for example, uh, how long did you travel from Makassar to the port Java in, in, with, the, with the sail, with oh, the sailing? It's, it's, it takes two days to night. Two days to night. To travel by ship from, from Makassar to here. So we are a maritime country. Uh, so how long, how, I, I would like to take like, uh, the, the longest way to go to Java. I think it's from, from Papua? From Papua, by, by, by boat. By boat? Yeah. Two weeks? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you imagine how this this is deliver power in the same boat at the same time? How you surrender your ideology, for example, by you know like I cook the rice better than you. Why don't you let us cooking and then I decide what kind of rice that I will cook. And they arrive in Java, suddenly they seems like they lost their own identity because they not decide who's cooking and rice or something like that. So this is like already embedded in this particular process. Like we don't even address the power. We, we always also to gain and acknowledge that if you had the power, naturally you should deliver it into different kind of uh, way of level. So that's why, I mean, for sure we need someone who take a lead, a lead, yeah? Back again, basketball yeah. or any uh, teammates uh, uh, sports, they have playmaker, but they also they have a captain. Sometimes captain and playmaker play differently. 
or you have tranquilistas for example the one who not similar with the attacker the one who's not similar with the playmaking but sometimes they act as a playmaker so this like change to channeling the power actually to distribute so that's why we call it uh, distributing this is like also uh, channeling and also challenging what is power needed because power is always structured but actually power is sometimes is not structured like the wind for example it's not structured the sun is not structured wi-fi is structured because sometimes wi-fi they could power bank is structured because they have a number on it it's limitations like power actually for us is limiting our, 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 our communications and our thoughts of sharing can i add a little bit because um, you know, they are the director, artistic director. I'm only a curatorial assistant. But this is, but <laughs> this is what you see in the curatorial world or in academia always. There is associate curator, senior curator, artistic director, you know, dean, whatever. There is always a pyramid, which weirdly I never really felt in Willow House, for example. I think that's, I don't know, this sucker analogy that Reza just told me, is really resonating to what I've been feeling all the time. Because before, somehow I was always trying to be a striker, play like a forward to get the score. So I really try to aim and kick a nice, you know, nice, and then get the point so that I can go higher, mm -hmm. so that I can be famous, whatever. But I feel like in Ruler House especially, or whenever I'm communicating with you guys, it doesn't really matter who scores. Because at the end of the day, someone scores from the team. So it's just like kicking the ball between friends, among people. And at some point, somebody gets something. And that's really satisfying feeling because it's a team effort. Okay, do you know that why we don't need to make a... Do you know maybe why we don't need to make a point? Because there is no goalkeeper. <laughs> yeah. Yes, um, I just want to ask something because, of course, every documenter is later on being researched on and uh, there are researchers and you look into, let's say, what does the curatorial position say, you know, what does it um, kind of propose as a way to live and so on. So my question is because, of course, the decision making, I think, is very crucial and also very interesting if you think about um, how you kind of of distribute ownership or ownership of the representational space and so on, which is really important questions, I think. Um, would it be possible that a researcher comes and is there for a session where you make decisions? Uh. That somebody would come by and be maybe involved, but also just be there to kind of understand how you actually make decisions? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, making decision is actually uh, uh, based on our experience in, in Rang Rupa uh, so far. Uh, making decision is not about that uh, when, it's, when, when it's a dead end and then we sometimes when, when we need to make a decision and then uh, and when it comes to that, and then we need to vote. We need to vote who's, uh, who's who. But voting is not really voting is not never really happen in Rang Rupa. Like uh, to even within, within us process. Yeah, like, yeah. No, Be been. Yeah, because there there never been general election among us, uh, so we don't need to vote. Uh, why there is why there is no general election? Because among us, there are no. This is regarding about the power. Uh, there are no such kind of notion of uh, uh, political, political, uh, political power among us. Mm. So, yeah, but it, matter of voting is only happening when it's mm. when there are political power. They try to gain uh, more power, and then try to gain more power, try to gain more uh, bigger uh, piece of cake from from mm. on the table. So. It's always based on the needs, it's always based on the context, it's always based on the proportion. Like I, like what, what we've been, uh, what, what Reza mentioned before that, none of us in Ruang Rupa is always, none of us in Ruang Rupa that been pushed to be something that based on 
one person's decision. Like, oh, you have to be an artist because you have this skill. Oh, you have to be curator. No, no one is, no one is really being pushed to, to. We, we're not shaping, we're not shaping uh, people option, and we yes. do not decide people. Yes, uh, I, I didn't want to indicate that. Yeah. More like that is actually really interesting how you do that. Yeah. And 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 that would be kind of I think kind of this long term decision making through mm. a whole group. Mm. That would be important to understand how you do that actually. So and um, yeah, so. Yeah. So you, you just propose that you want you want to see how we make a decision like. A yeah, exactly. So it would be um, so. For example, Christopher and Sabine they actually research mm -hmm. on these kind of processes from the Occupy movement also kind of because there were certain gestures and so on to come to uh, share decisions and so on. And I, I think that something uh, one could kind of also then apply to other practices and so on. For example, we also often work with students in a way that is not kind of we decide something, Ronald and I, but it's more a, a shared des decision making. So when we do projects, everybody can propose artists, for example, mm -hmm. and, and so on. Um, so it's an, an ongoing process, I know that, but I think in, in many aspects you kind of bring something on the table that's also new and that would be just interesting to know more about or to, mm -hmm. to be part of or to, to come, let's say, for a week or something and, and uh, yeah, be there. So I mean like in the, the sense question. of this involvement, for example, to have friends to researching on us because this already been like a several way uh, of uh, us friends that not related to documenta but they also harvesting uh, our uh, way of working we back again they, they call it harvesting so uh, they harvest with the different thing for example now we have uh, Sergio Rancanetti yeah. mm -hmm. Sergio is coming uh, uh, directly uh, uh, come to Ruru house to filming us about us process in Ruru house yeah, but in the beginning we are mentioning to he to to Sergio it's like Sergio, please be aware that we work just like Shuki mentions about us working in rural house. We respected a lot of each of every individual that working as a singular individuals in the documentas process. For example, I probably I'm the one who quite flexible, or even Chuki or Andan or even Iswanto, but I think could be not the same apply to other friends that could be related. Some of them could be say like, uh, I don't know what uh, Sergio is doing right now. Is it okay? I said like, but Sergio, as an example, as a one of our new friend, Sergio is quite flexible within, within them work, within how them approach. He, Sergio know on how the film will be uh, take, take as a process. Sergio is not part of Documentas 15, but Sergio would like to acknowledge this particular process that's going. And a student from the Castle University, the one that I know of, I forget, it's like from Castle University or not, they try also to harvest us by creating like model of, let's say, auditing. Is it auditing? By uh, the infrastructural practices within this approach of us, Lumbung, and the notions and like working in the coast. It's part of decisions making too. So it's like, if as long as this particular working process not being disturbed because of this, you know, probably that's sometimes that we are not really would like to being bothered anyhow. It's not like we are really, uh, we are open, yes, but please also understand that we are also human, not no Macintosh, for example. We could just push toward everything, no, we are also human. I have also like these capacities on saying no in the, in the sense, but in the way that we, back again, we not try to avoid the, avoiding this, but we are trying to communicating what is much more suitable to its need by so-called researching or you know applying this research throughout this, this particular knowledge that us working in the institution. Because sometimes it's really different. I mean, each of every, every what so-called research is also different. But for sure, we are very welcome to it on how we would like to acknowledge this and also if we would like to contribute toward your notions because the way that we understand each of every individual have its own new ingredients that could be benefic beneficial for us too. But remember that we need also to respect 
another different body that also connected to us bodies. So this is uh, this is need to be be more understandable. Uh, yeah, to 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 add what Reza said, that openness is very important, but also respectful is much more uh, important because everyone has their own consent. Uh, everyone has their own consent when, and then when we have a capacity to, to say yes, and then of course we also have capacities to say no at the same time. Uh, yeah. Um, to me, um, you know, you use the word collective governance or collective decision making, but it appears to me it's more about collective caring. It's not about, you know, we used to talk about the government decision making, now we talk about governance all of a sudden to be more politically correct. But maybe it's not just about the governance anymore. It's about collective caring, mm -hmm. which requires a lot more effort, actually, because it's really you know, case by case, one on one. And I think that's the beauty that I find in their process. Yes, of course. I really think uh, that's very uh, inspiration for all of us kind of to, to go further on in, in that direction of sharing knowledge, but also sharing a representational space and sharing possibilities. So even if we have probably to figure out one by one for its, its <laughs> event and uh, yeah, how to do that. Uh, so, so thanks so much for your proposal, how to to make a big exhibition and a big project, and thank yeah. Thank you for inviting us to be here to, yeah. to share our stories. Yeah. To have a conversation, I think yeah. it's much more good later on. We could just yeah. have a conversation like directly. I could give you my number and we could do WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> email, sometimes I'm not good with emails, but WhatsApp. Yeah. That's okay. How many, how many, how many emails, hundred emails in your inbox now? I think you're the one who holds the record, like 400? Yeah, <laughs> Okay, then thanks so much. Thank you very much.